need to be in the whole church. I don't know what values you have at home. If you want to help me raise, ask me how I do it. Like I'll ask you how you do it with your child. Come on, say amen. Amen. But join. But join in Christ. At some point, you and I have to come to the point where we grow up in spiritual things. I only need about 20 minutes to do it. See, if you want to really be honest, if you're really walking with God in truth, you have a whole lot of questions every time you don't understand what's going on. That's true. That's true. And most of the time, you begin to question yourself whether or not it's your fault. Come on, say amen. Amen. When things are not doing, going the way you're doing it, moving the way you want it to move in the spirit, and, and the pressure comes on you, you begin to question a lot of things around you, but then you begin to question yourself. If I dot this I, would it change? If I cross that T, would it change? Right. If I make that a capital, somebody say amen. Amen. If I don't speak to her, would it change? If I don't talk to him, would it change? You start questioning yourself, and that's the sign of immaturity because we don't recognize who we are and why we're here. Wow. And I, I want to talk to you about maturing in Christ because Paul was talking about, first of all, if you're going to mature in Christ, you've got to know who you are and what your call is. That's good, Apostle. But you have to know that all, all things were made by him and all things were made for him. Did we study that Sunday? All things were made for his purpose and for his glory. Say amen. So if you understand that you have been created for and produced for the glory of God, then you will understand that everything about your life is not for your comfort, but for his glory. Amen. And we, get, we come to the point where we understand that everything that we go through is for eventually for God's glory because we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus under good works, which he before ordained that we should walk in. Our lives are ordained and predestined. We are, we've, been, we've been created by him. Remember Sunday, whether they be principles of throwing things visible or invisible, whether they be in heaven or on earth, all things are made by him and for him, that means you too. Amen. Oh, wow. Come on, Apostle. Come on. It means that he made you, he made you for him too. Yes. So really you have been created for his glory, for, for the workmanship of his glory, right? Amen. So when Paul says, um, um, it's been given me a thorn in the flesh, Amen. the message of Satan to buffet me. Uh -huh. The first thing you got to understand that with your call, comes your, 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 your adversary. Amen. Paul was speaking from the, from, the, from the perspective of an apostle. All of us here, we're in an apostolic ministry. Somebody say amen. amen. And Paul, you have to understand that. Now let me teach you one thing before I move on. The word apostle is from the root word warfare. Ooh. As long as you're connected with an apostolic ministry, you will be in warfare. Yeah, that's true. My God. Come on. Come on now. I want to ask a question. Am I the only one hard that's hard in here? Christian, the air conditioner is on? Amen. Can I sit and talk to you all like last week? So, I understand that the, the root word for, for apostolic comes from the root word warfare. So when you become a part of an apostolic ministry, you become part of a ministry that's really the, spokes, the, 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 the mouthpiece of God, so you, you're going to meet with a lot of resistance. Amen. So when Paul says now, he said, um, it is not expedient for me to, to glory. I will come to vision and revelation of the Lord. I want you to understand that what God called you to do is going to happen in spite of you. And some of you right now, you're having visions and revelations and don't understand it. And you have to come to the point where you accept that that's going to happen. It's going to happen because that's why he chose you. The things that's going on in your life, the anointing, the things you experience, they're going to happen to you whether you agree with them or not. Amen. If you understand that, say Amen. And you have to come to the point where somebody says, you know what? I'm going to do this. This is going to happen to me. I'm going to go through this. Because if you don't do that, you'll keep doubting yourself and questioning yourself all the time. Amen? Do you, do you get what I'm saying? So you have to come to the point where you say, it is too hard in here. <laughs> let, me just, let me just talk to you about maturing in Christ. If, you, if you're going to mature in Christ, yes, please open it. Open the doors in the back, please. If, <laughs> if you're going to mature in the things of the Spirit, you have to understand your purpose is for God's glory. 
whatever comes within that is for the glory of Jesus Christ, your King. And if you don't understand that, you can keep judging yourself on this journey. You have to understand that no matter if I'm on a mountain or I'm in the valley, it's, it has been ordained for me to be there for that reason and for that season and for, for the reason of his glory. So no matter where I'm at, I can't begin to judge myself or doubt myself. I got to always stay focused on the fact that I'm here because of Jesus Christ. Can you receive what I'm saying? Can you receive me? Say amen. No matter what I'm at, no matter who I'm with, no matter whether I'm, I'm laughing or crying, no matter what I understand or not, I have to see from the perspective of God that I'm his workmanship created in Christ Jesus under good works. And he's going to bring my life to an expected end. I know the thought that I think towards you, they are thoughts of good and not of evil, and to bring your life to an expected end. And I understand that my life is for the glory of God. So no matter what I'm experiencing right now, my focus is got to be, this is for the glory of God. If you can receive that, say amen. amen. This is going to help you when you're dealing with things. You know, Paul says it was given to me a thorn of flesh. Now when he said given, I need about half an hour to teach you. If I give you something, what that becomes? My possession. It becomes a gift. Who said that? It's a gift. Giving gift. So when Paul said it was given to me a thorn of flesh, he didn't earn it. He didn't ask for it. Some, somebody gave it to him. So basically say, due to this great call that I have in my life, all these revelations I'm getting, all these visions I'm seeing, God gave me something to keep me humble. Amen. But he said, this thing operates like the messenger of Satan because it keeps it keep beating up on me. Anybody in here got a thorn in the flesh? <laughs> Let me break down some more things. First of all, it's given, right? He says a thorn in the flesh, right? Now, uh, what is your flesh? A way of thinking, right? That's not your body. So Paul says something is going on with me that mentally I'm not very stable. Wow. Wow. That's good teaching, Apostle. Something is going on in my mentality that I keep making these decisions and making these choices and doing these things that's contrary to what I'm supposed to be doing. Remember he said the other scripture, I think it's Romans chapter 6, the thing I do I would not, the thing I would not that I do, O wretched man that I am, who should deliver me from this body of death? So he's saying right now that because of all these receipts, when you when you in the life in the world of visions and revelation, you live in a world where your mentality is gonna always be challenged. Yes, yes, yes. That's why the people who we always think is crazy, the ones who get the greatest revelation. Yes. And then sometimes we can't decipher whether it's them speaking or their mentality speaking. But we have to be both oh, come on now, y'all talking to him. This genuine love says, say it's up in here. It's in the house, it's in the mix, amen? It, it's up in here. It's up in here. We got a whole lot of thorns up in here, amen? We got a whole lot of gifted people who can see things up in here. And because of that, because of that, and me myself, I, I came to the condition. <laughs> you know that alcoholism is a mental disease? Drug addiction is a mental disease? All these things are mental disease. We call people when they, oh, they bipolar, or they this and they that. If you got, if you can't control yourself in any area, something wrong with your thinking. Wow. Yes. Come on, Apostle, come on. Any addiction becomes a mental situation. Somebody say amen. amen. Because your thoughts driving you to something that you don't really want to do. Right, right. Amen. Fire. I'm going to right? I, I only have a few more minutes to teach. So Paul said, now, I have this thing going on with me. This spirit keep talking to me. This thing keeps driving me to where I don't want to go. But I know it's because of all these revelations. I know it's because of this anointing. It's because of this apostolic anointing. But it, it, I, I'm in here by myself. Anybody else in here that think you would not that you do? Yes. At least there are four people on it. I'm, I'm going to ask that again. Anybody in here will be honest that today in your life, that thing you would not that you do? Yes. That's a part of that thorn that you have in your flesh. The thing that, that God stuck in your life that's, that you Lucifer used him to try to glorify himself in your life. But God stuck that spirit. That spirit, it's going to always be with you. I'm preaching to myself here. It's going to always be with you. Because he said right here, I, I, for this thing, um, my page there, is the devil working on the page too. For this thing, I've been taught the Lord Christ that it might depart from me. So Paul said, I prayed for this thing to go away. Anybody in here deal with anything that was given to you that you done prayed and ain't going nowhere? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody in here dealing with something? That, come on, now talk to me here. You have this attitude that you done prayed about and still there? Yeah. And you done said, Lord, I want to change this. 
Take this away from me. Shaba Baba Bohushai. And you all on the floor, striking the floor. Shonda Bohush. I rebuke this in the name of Jesus. And when you get it, you do it again. <laughs>